Okay guys, so this is part two of the PB16 Ultra review. Uh, if you're just joining me and you haven't watched part one, stop this now, go find part one and start that because part two will make no sense if you haven't watched the whole thing. Uh, my camera only records for 12 minutes and 55 seconds right now, so that's kind of where I'm stuck. Uh, but I'll continue for you guys that have been watching and watched the first part already. Uh, now I'm gonna touch on the performance of the PB16 Ultra. And honestly, I've never heard anything quite like it. Um, I've heard subs that are louder. Okay, I've been to concerts. I, I, okay, I've definitely heard louder subs, but I've never heard anything quite like this. It's, it's a little bit different. It's got power and depth, and it's just such a strong performance, but it's not so loud that it hurts. And that's another point I'll go, go into in a minute. But I understand the desire for more power. Uh, the PB2000s, for example, are great. I think that they, uh, they're still one of my favorite subs. They do so well in everything. It's, it's a fantastic sub. But the PB16 Ultras, and I, I have to assume everything in between because I haven't heard the PB12 Plus yet or the PB13 Ultra yet. But as you go up in power, it's, it's just increasing the sure-footedness of the subs. And the sound you get is more solid and more convincing. Uh, it's, it's, it's something else. It's next level. Uh, music is as it should be. I, it doesn't really change music all that much. Uh, unless it's really hard hitting, then you get a difference. Like Metallica hits harder. Um, but if it's overdone, it's probably just too much gain rather than the sub. Uh, that's, that's been my experience. I, I think you can balance these subs for just about any size and room, and I'm actually going to be testing that out in the future. Um, but movies are more convincing, and it's, the realism is outrageous. Uh, one of the other reasons I wanted to reshoot this video is because in, the, in between the time I shot it and actually, uh, and now, I watched Hacksaw Ridge. Wow, that is an excellent base movie. It's gory, it's like Saving Private Ryan kind of gory, all right, but uh, it's, it's a great story, uh, but the scene where they're firing off the guns from the naval ships, wow, that is a, 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 that's amazing. That's a great demo scene. Uh, it was just impressive. And I didn't even have like the good, uh, you know, format. I, I just had Dolby Digital. I've been ordering these Netflix movies. And the one that came out, you know, I expect sometimes they won't be Dolby Atmos when and ordinarily they would be, but this didn't even have like True HD or DTS Master. It was just basic Dolby Digital. So it wasn't even that good a sound. I'm gonna be ordering a 4K copy and, and try it out with that, but it wasn't even the best sound and man, it was just amazing. I mean, it was like you were there, um, just without the hearing damage. <laughs> um, and, and it's, these subs are legitimately concerning. Um, I still get a nervous giggle every now and then when I'm watching a new movie. You know, I haven't seen everything out there. And there are still these scenes that just come in and just surprise me. And it just makes me giggle and nervously because it's like, oh my gosh, that was an amazing scene. Uh, and of course that happened with the PB2000s and, and you know, all the other subs I've listened to, but it, this is different. This, is, this, is, this gets you in the chest and it just, it's such a more, visceral experience it's just it's insane uh, there's tons of headroom with these subs I'm not willing to find the limits of these things uh, primarily because this house was built in the 50s <laughs> I have I have serious concerns I don't want to shake it apart uh, it's it's really is I've joked about you know hey maybe if your foundation is not that great now it's a serious concern now I'm not joking anymore it's serious uh, it, it can really <laughs> these things are something else. Um, you know, as again, I'm not willing to, to find the limits. Um, I do prefer standard mode over extended, and I'll go into why in a future video, uh, but standard is so good to begin with, and extended maybe drops you down an extra half a hertz, maybe, or a hertz. Um, not that impressive. Uh, I really like the, the standard mode more than anything else. Um, and it's still incredibly comfortable in ported modes. Um, which brings me to my next point, is the PB16 Ultra versus the SB16 Ultra. I've done a video on 
ported versus sealed. Uh, I've done an article on it, and I have pressure issues in my ears. And so when I listen to a sealed sub, I, I got the the SB2000. Um, you know, I, shoot, I think it was a little over a year ago, and uh, or more than that actually. I've been doing this for a while. Anyway, I noticed that I have some ear fatigue going on because it just it, there's a difference in pressure and it it's uncomfortable. And it's not something that um, everybody has, but it's something I have. And so in sealed mode, I tried it with these. I put all three port plugs in, put it switched over to sealed mode, and I still had pressure issues. And you know, it, it's not something that everybody has, but it's just unlucky. And it's particularly unlucky for me because it rules out a whole bunch of subs that I can't listen to now. I mean, at least I can listen to them, but it's not something I'm gonna truly enjoy. Um, and I'll say that ported is more pet friendly, um, more friendly most likely to those with autism, uh, people with headache issues, things like that. And another point I'll make is that when, uh, both when I had the SB2000s and when I had these in sealed mode, Angel's ears would flicker because she didn't like the sound. It was bothering her and she'd get up and walk out of the room. It happened with the SBs and it happened with these. Uh, it happened with the SB2000s and it happened with these in sealed mode. So I'm basically telling you guys this because if you're gonna spend this much money on subs, I think that kind of information helps. Um, so that's one of those things. Uh, and for that reason, I will not be actually reviewing the SB16 Ultra. I won't be actually having it here in my home. Uh, I don't want to have SVS spend the, the shipping money and all that stuff to send it out when I already know what's gonna happen. So, uh, but I will say that if you enjoy sealed subs, the SB16 Ultra makes a ton of sense. Uh, it's less money, less for floor space, very deep presentation. And that, I think, is the cool part of it. Um, in terms of home theater performance, there's very little penalty for the SB16 Ultra. And I know that from switching these over to the sealed mode. It still sounds like a ported sub in sealed mode. Now, I understand the box size is different, all that good stuff, but essentially everything I understand about it, uh, it's going to be, you're not gonna notice much difference at all. Well. There is a difference between the PB16 Ultra and the SB16 Ultra, no doubt. But the, as, in the sealed mode, these still sound like a big ported box. Uh, and it's just in a smaller box. And uh, I've, I've run sealed modes in other subs before and definitely not had the same experience. So uh, if you, you're into sealed subs and you don't have those, any of those ear issues, the SB16 Ultra, uh, it makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't persuade anybody away from buying it. I think it's a very, very smart sub. I just can't personally enjoy it because of my own pressure issues with my ear. All right, uh, <laughs> another, yet another reason for the delay was something I said in the video was that it's not that much bigger than the PB2000s, which is so untrue. It's ridiculously untrue. Uh, the point I was trying to make is in my room, they don't really take up that much more space. All right, so they're not that much bigger, but they really are that much bigger. Uh, they, you really wanna check the dimensions and stuff like that. There goes Bear Bear. Um, 175 pounds, crate shipped, uh, extremely dense. It's like they made these things out of concrete. I mean, they are very heavy for their size, uh, which they need to be. Uh, they're probably not ideal for apartments, you know, just saying. Uh, Isolation is a must for wood floors, and I'll tell you why I could feel these subs uh, when I didn't have the isolation all throughout the house. I could feel it in my feet when I was in my bathroom, which is far away, and in my back bedroom, I could feel it on my feet through the floor. And when I put the isolation on, it wasn't nearly as bad. You can walk, the only time you can really feel it in your feet is when you walk up close to them. So it does a pretty good job of decoupling the, the subs from the floor. But if you have wood subfloors, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially for these because they're putting out so much power. If you have a concrete floor, probably not so much. It's not a, that big of a concern because the floor is not absorbing and then kicking out sound like it does in a wood floor. Wood floor takes that sound and pushes it back out in whatever form your wood floor is gonna produce. So that's one of the reasons it makes, you know, it, it's not that great to have, uh, you know, subwoofers on wood floors because it can be an issue. And granted, there are some people that like to have subwoofers 
uh, in wood floors because they make such a, a weird, uh, such a reverberation and you can feel it more. Uh, I don't know, I like the sound better than the feeling, personally. Um, another thing about these are they're very deep. They go back quite a bit. So that's an issue that you should be aware of. I actually pulled my entertainment center out a little bit so that it, it didn't look so buried in there. <laughs> so, uh, so that's something to be concerned about is the depth of these things, not just in extension, but in physical dimensions. Um, but I've got to say, they still look very nice, and I don't think they would be out of place, you know, next to a grand piano or something like that. They are very pleasant looking. They they fit in a living room. A lot of subs that are, uh, you know, I would say competing in this area. Uh, some of them have two and three drivers, and they're stacked kind of tall, uh, which makes it just a little more difficult for the wife acceptance factor or spouse accept acceptance factor. Uh, so that's concern. But these actually look pretty nice uh, in a living room. Now, of course, there's going to be people that say that's way too big. And I get that. Um, I'm a little bit biased to having bigger subs in the living room, so it doesn't bother me as much. Uh, but I, I think these still work in a living room. Um, they don't look like, uh, I don't know, they look very nice. So I'll just go with that. Um, and I've actually got both finishes here. That's the piano gloss and that's the black oak. Um, I personally prefer the black oak because it's lower maintenance. I got the dogs. Uh, it's just easier to take care of. Uh, I'm a little more nervous about the piano gloss, but uh, it is absolutely gorgeous though, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm actually gonna have to start this again, so we're gonna move on to part three. So uh, I know it's taking a bit, but I appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and find part three and I'll catch you there.